question that came in via email, but a local one. Is closing Burnham Police Station the right thing to do when policing levels are already stretched and local crime has been rising? Lorna, could you start us off that one? Yes, um, I live in Cheddar and actually I think it's a sad thing when a local police station does close down because the policemen on the beat know the area, they know the people. And women, they... presumably. <laughs> So, um, uh, thank you for that. Um, one of the things that is going on uh, in Manchester that the CPA has taken note of is local organisations, one called Saltbox, which people are in the community working with to help crime and disorder um, really reduce, which is what we all want, but it is the involvement of the community. And I think it's quite an example of what a success can be when people get involved um, in helping other people. Um, I'm really speaking from the Christian ethos of uh, not sort of just being individualistic, but of working together as communities, which I'm sure happens in this community. But perhaps we need to think more of this because the police um, obviously aren't really able to do everything that people on the street can observe and see. Thank you. Andy. I think it's uh, one of the worst effects of the policies that this government government has actually put in place. Um, the first responsibility of government is security and law and order. Now this government, through its austerity cuts, apart from trashing hopefully the other subjects we'll be talking about um, of education, is the decimation of the police service. Labour obviously, in our manifesto will be putting more police officers on the beat, and I think that's essential. And in fact, last weekend, I was talking to a police officer who just come up for 21 years service and was supposed to be going to collect an award uh, from the Police and Crime Commissioner and the Chief Constable. And what they said to me was they didn't want to go. They didn't want to go because they had lost seven years of their pension and at the age they were, they didn't think they were properly equipped in terms of chasing people around. There weren't enough people there and the morale in the police service is rock bottom. Now that you can place directly at the door of the Conservatives. And it's not good enough. There's other things that are not good enough. The town in which I live has two banks have closed. So it's okay for services just to disappear. I don't think it is. And the reality is that austerity is a political choice. It is not an economic requirement. I don't mind if Burnham on Sea Police Station is closed. If there's an alternative and people feel they can go to see police officer in a place that's near to them and is convenient for them and I think most of you I mean I used to run my surgeries in the ASDA police pod um, for several years and um, then it became unavailable but I think the most important thing is that you can you feel that when you phone up you're actually going to be listened to and that someone's going to take action and I think one of the problems is that police have become so stretched that actually that's not always the way we experience phoning the police. Most of us go onto that 101 number because we're encouraged to do that. And you may not feel that you have somebody who understands your situation, your village, your town, your whatever it is. And I think that's <coughs> excuse me, a real problem. Now, we've actually said that what we would do is put an extra £300 million into community policing. Now, I think community police officers were brilliant absolutely fantastic because they did tend to know their patch and it was a much smaller patch than the whole of Burnham on the Sea. So I think that's a, that's a helpful thing to do where we actually end up with police understanding their environment, their communities and they get to know people 
as perhaps police did when I was a child. Um, <coughs> I think there are a number of things that we could do to improve policing generally and make it much easier. There's certainly there's a move towards making sure that they wear body cameras. I think that's not a bad thing. Um, and my sense is also that I know that I've met a, a community police officer um, at an event the other day and she was saying, well, she'd got an absolute brick of a mobile phone, but it had, she couldn't get any service on it, she couldn't make any calls on it, she couldn't receive any emails, and she wasn't able to send any of her reports in. But there must be the technology, we must be able to do this sort of stuff. So I think it's really important. The other thing I would add is that it's really essential that we increase the amount of training for police on matters relating to mental health, because there are an awful lot of people who end up in, um, in custody, because they have mental health problems as opposed to um, having committed a crime of their own volition, if you like. It's, it's an illness, and we need to recognise that that's a very, very serious problem, and a large number of people end up in custody or in prison because of that. So those would be my immediate thoughts. James. Um, thank you. So a uh, direct answer to the direct question is no, I do not believe that Burnham on Sea Police Station should close. Uh, I have very firmly represented that view uh, to the Police and Crime Commissioner, to the Chief Constable and to the Area Police Commander. But they don't agree. Um, their view is that bricks and mortar doesn't solve crime. Police officers do. Uh, and their view is that they don't need a police station in town, they can maintain a presence by using other facilities. Now I think that that ignores the fact that people feel safe knowing that there is a police station in the town, that, pe that police officers are inside. Um, but it's an operational issue for the police and they've been very clear with me that they don't think that that is right. Where I think that that logic falls short is that actually there is not a police station in Northern <coughs> Sedgwick. There's a big one in Bridgewater, which is fantastic. There's a great, there's a big one in Weston, but there's actually nothing now in Cheddar and Burnham. Um, if you go in, in Latin, the first one you get to is in Wells. Uh, and I don't think that that is the right lay down, especially when west of the M5, between sort of April and October, between Burnham and Weston, there are probably 200,000 people probably at peak. Uh, now that is that sort of police presence uh, the, the, the policing that's required for that number of people is quite significant. Now, in fairness to the local police commander, Lisa Simpson, um, she and I had a meeting with, a, with pretty much all of the local holiday park owners uh, last January, and there is a seasonal policing plan for Burnham on Sea now, which I'm pleased to see in place. Uh, and it's good to know that the police are aware of the requirements to better resource Western Burnham <coughs> uh, with those things. Um, I do think that. There is also, however, and this is something the Chief Constable and the Priest and Crime Commissioner speak on quite convincingly, um, that the number of traditional sort of crimes like burglary and muggings and stuff like that, that they are falling, they're falling quite quickly. And that is an odds with our experience locally in the last couple of months because we've had a spate of burglaries here in Burnham on Sea. But it is, if you look at the figures for the Avon Somerset Force and for the country, the nature of crime is changing. They are increasingly having to resource cybercrime. They are increasingly having to look at how they tackle online grooming and, and those sorts of and online fraud and insidious things like that that require quite high level intent, resource intensive policing and how they balance the both. Now, the answer, obviously, and Andy and I would agree vigorously on this, is more money. Now, I don't think that that is initially a straight up please chance the exchequer can we just have more cash in the policing budget the thing that really winds me up and i have mentioned this in parliament a number of times and as the chairman of the royal fair share campaign i will hope to continue to do so um, is this dampening of police formulas so there is an allocation of money per force and then forces that are disproportionately covering rural areas there is a dampening which reduces the amount that that force gets i think it's illogical that a per capita allocation should be reduced just because of the number of fields you can see from wherever it is that you live and work. And I'd like to see that dampening uh, process uh, reduced and ultimately removed altogether. Thank you, candidates. Um,